For this tutorial, I'll be using these 12 volt WS2815 individually addressable lights from BTF. Now the biggest advantage to these over the 5 volt WS2812B lights that I normally use is that they're going to require less power injection. So if you have a project that you're planning to do and it's going to be longer than 5 meters, these might be a great option for you to consider. Taking a closer look at how these are set up, you're going to have your white ground wire, a blue backup data line, your green main data, red voltage, and your extra power injection wires. To get things set up the way I'm going to do it, you could snip off the connector piece and use the wires that it comes with, but I prefer to use some that are a little bit thicker. Now I could take the time to remove the heat shrink tubing and the wires underneath, but to speed things up a little bit, I'll just cut off the first LED. From here, I'm going to quickly solder some 18 gauge silicone wires to the LED strip, and I'll speed through this because if you're interested, I already made a how-to solder video that goes over exactly what I'm doing here in great detail with very close up footage. So for power, I'll be using this 12 volt 5 amp supply, and I'm going to cut back a little bit more of the wires to make things easier to work with. As far as controlling the LEDs, I'll be using WLED installed on an ESP32 device. I already made a quick how-to video on the simple steps of getting WLED set up on this so you can watch it if you have any questions and the soldering video I previously mentioned will walk you through how to easily get the wires connected to the module like I have here. And finally, since our ESP board can't use the same 12 volt supply that the lights need, I'll be using the simple 12 to 5 volt converter. So to get everything wired up, I'll be using these Wego connectors and if you've watched any of my recent videos, I pretty much use these in all my projects. First, I'm going to take a connector and plug in the red voltage wires from my main power supply, the converter, and the LED strip. Next, take another connector, and this one needs to have at least four slots, and plug in the black negative wire from the power supply, the converter, the LED strip, plus the blue backup data wire coming from the strip as well. Now to make sure our ESP gets power, I'll be connecting the yellow positive wire coming from the converter to the red voltage wire connected to the module, and then doing the same with our black negative slash ground wires. And finally, we can connect the green data wire from the ESP32 to the green data wire connected to the beginning of the LED strip. And that's pretty much it. You can plug things in and begin using the WLED program to control the lights. As for a quick demonstration, I put two full 5 meter strips into my favorite diffuser channels from Mazada, which will completely get rid of hot spots. Now, just go into WLED and under LED Preferences, make sure to enter the number of pixels you have, and in my case, there's going to be 599. Now this is by no means a WLED tutorial as that could take hours to go over all the features, but I will go over some of my favorite animations from here on out.
So the other nice thing about using wiggle connectors is that you can easily swap things around if needed. For example, I got this 12 volt 10 amp power brick that I wanted to test out. I cut off the plug at the beginning and cut back the outer shell to get to the red and black wires. Then all I had to do was remove the wires from the other power supply and insert these into the wiggle connectors and I was good to go. So I hope this video was helpful and I plan on doing some comparisons down the road between these and the 5 volt strips to see just how big of a difference it makes. But thank you all so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions at all.